Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. Okay, we have a quorum, so I will call the meeting to order of the uh, special meeting of the Bellas Falls Village Trustees. It is now five o'clock on May 19th, and my apologies for any errors that you were seeing on the website. We're still working through the nuts and bolts, um, doing this on a regular basis, getting it onto the new website, which is slightly different and somehow confusing um, to many people, including myself, but we'll get there. 5 p.m. and... Uh, Let's see, I'll call me to order any additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters and or pressing matters that will require ratification at a future meeting. Have we anything? Doesn't no. sound like we do. Just an I, oh, okay. thank you. Approve the minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, we have no minutes to approve. We'll do them at the regular meeting when that happens in June. Uh, public comment. Anyone? I have to look around. Please, yeah. apart from this what do you oh, right, did you have, and you have too? So, okay, so Bob, did you yeah. have comments? Yeah, right. can I do this without offending anybody? Certainly. Probably. We're sitting more than six feet away from each other, right? I hope so, I'm trying. That's why I'm at the ready, so that's okay. <laughs> I am here and I'm planning to go to Smart Deal with the very same concern. Um, I've made enough inquiries that I know what I saw on Facebook is fundamentally accurate. Three town employees, one who voted for a quarter of a century of experience, was told, thank you, but we can't do it right now. There's a door, let me open it wide for you. This causes me some problem. Number one, I disagree with the action, and I realize that we can debate that all day, but I really have a problem with this, how it was done. Was this done openly? Well, the all trustees was there in action. Uh, this was well, three yeah. town employees, Bob. Just understand that. We had no control over that. Okay, I was told you were part of the decision and you were involved. They are town employees, so no. No, no okay. active participation no, at all. Okay, well, I still want you to hear me. It applies. It may not apply to this, it applies to the future. Nice. I don't like backroom dealings. I've lived in Bellas Falls since 1995. I may have seen more than one or two. That's not what I hope government is about these days. That's not what I hope it's about going forward. And so my major critique is I wish that you would think that you personally, you institutionally, some thought would go into whether you really want to manage or form a government. It's not you, it's we. I don't think we do. We can't keep a manager. Why? I think there's a cycle that goes on. Very predictable cycle. Manager can't do his or her job because they aren't allowed to do their jobs. They're told what to do. No one's going to win from the bank. No one. Uh, I guess I will hold. The last person was a town hall employee, right? Two people I knew, two of the three I knew, one of them I didn't, and he was not, the one male, he was not a village person, is that correct, employee? None of them were village. None of them were village. Okay. Perhaps I said enough for this board at this moment. I, uh, I'm very concerned, and I can assure you, <laughs> that never, I'm not gonna assure anybody of anything, I personally vote all the time, and I don't like the feeling that I want of what's going on. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. Um, did you say your name for the record? Gina. Uh, last name? DeCampo. Thank you. Um, the secretary, the clerk has to put that. Thank you. You're welcome. Go ahead. Um, I don't know where to bring it, who to bring it to. Um, I've been a registered village voter. Um, for 19 years now, when I first moved here, we had a little bit of a drug problem. It wasn't too, too bad. Um, I now live on Green Street, where I am surrounded by three, not one, but three houses that sell drugs within a 150 foot vicinity 
of my home where children play. This past summer in the Coda and Coda parking lot, we found drug needles, which is where a lot of our kids play. Then when I, um, when we had Caesar, when these three houses did see him, he did make a difference. He makes a um, difference with his presence. They see him and they tend to walk away. Mm -hmm. It's to the point now where I, the neighborhood is joking that they're selling Girl Scout cookies because the windows go up and the drugs exchange hands and then they walk away. I do know that multiple officers in their own POVs have been out there trying to watch what is happening, um, but they're good at what they do, except they're not good enough because I can stand on my own front porch and I can watch it day, night, weekend, doesn't make a difference. Um, we have a lot of kids in our neighborhood and it's very, very concerning. Um, I would like to find a way to save Caesar, to bring him back, to do the job that he's been doing. I personally know just from three articles I saw in the paper that he got about $100,000 off the streets just in three um, people being pulled over or arrested. Um, so I'm a little confused of why the village voters like myself didn't get the option to keep Caesar and fight for our village um, and our village children. It's our kids that are going to die. It's our kids that have died. Um, it's our family members, and it's getting to be too much, and I'd like to do something about it. The PD and I have talked um, on how to best handle it, and now I'm bringing it to you guys. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, let's see. Miss, did anyone else have any comment? Okay. Yes. Jim Mitchell. Jim Mitchell. Go ahead. Hi, I'm concerned about the drugs too, and irrespective of seizure or not, the drugs have been here for a long time. And seizure, a lot of these drugs on Barker Street, you know what I'm talking about. You know, so don't say the dog did a good job with, with the boss allowed these drugs to be sold in this village. They knew damn well that there were drugs being sold on Fort Barker Street, Green Street, right here on Canal Street. My guy had free drug houses. Why don't they do something about that? We hear how great the dog is. Yeah, I love the dog. I didn't. I do not think that our chief did a good job for 14 years. That's why we have a proliferation of drugs. Change can't come soon enough. Enough with this searching. Let's get a chief that's going to clean this town up. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, it looks like that's everyone publicly. Um, therefore, we will move on to the agenda, um, which mm -hmm. concern, considers just one particular item, which is the discussion of before, during, and after the performance of the Bellas Falls Police Department in connection with the Funeral Parade of 513-2020. I want to, I put it into four different categories. I want to make sure we cover each one independently and don't get confused on what actually happened. Um, a, we'd like to know who issued the permit. I believe, um, who was the person to speak to you about that? Would that be Hi. you, Shannon, Officer Bemis? I can take that. Um, we were not uh, issuing permits for birthday parties okay. or parades or things of that nature at the time because of the pandemic. So we were simply doing them on request. We've been doing kids' birthdays and things of that nature for since, since the pandemic hit. So we did not issue a permit. There was no permit. Okay. Therefore, there was no public advance notice. Therefore, who was approached concerning this issue? The that, police department and yeah. the fire department. The fire department was approached, asked to participate, and the police department then got involved in chief and okay. We became I became aware of it on uh, Tuesday, um, the, the day before the event happened. Um, we had received some information that uh, that was on Facebook uh, that it was going to happen. We had been asked if we wanted uh, 
coordinate with them on the event, and we agreed that we would. Uh, we saw some information there also that there would be uh, uh, burnouts uh, and things like that, something like that. We made contact with the uh, family uh, and told them that that absolutely could not happen, uh, that we would not participate, and that we would shut it down if it did happen. Uh, the, uh, and the organizers, family members who did that, agreed to that and said that no, none, none of that would be happening uh, at the parade. And that was prior to the parade? That was the day prior to it, yes. Okay. Did any of the trustees have any other comments on these two items? Advance notice and permit, not an issue. I would be curious to who's who spoke to the family prior to that 12th date? I, I think the 12th was the date that-, that uh, That's that when you said that. I, I, that I became aware of it. I believe that's the date that the family contacted uh, the office. Because it had already been, by the 8th, it had already been advertised. So and in, in, in within the advertisement, it was explaining that they were going to be escorted. So somebody, had spoken some of their they had asked the fire department to do to chaperone or you know go with the parade as they've been doing for other events since the pandemic. Okay, so the fire department knew prior to the eighth and then the I, I can't guarantee that Sean left actually on the emergency call. Yep. He should be back. I, but I know that I knew about it on the twelfth. And then I'd heard that there was a uh, thing, and I didn't see the social media, but I had heard that. And that's when we made the call to the, the organizers, the family members, and uh, said that this could not happen and this could not, um, you know, we would not participate in that and we would and we would shut it down if that was going to happen. And they assured us that it would not and was not. Anyone else on these two items? No. Jake, did you have anything on that? No, no. Madam President. Yes, Mr. Mitchell. The family posted this on my page on the 11th. Both parties posted it. I sent it to Chief Bemis and said they're going to be doing this and this. That was on the 11th, two days before the procession. So, Somebody is not telling you the truth. Okay, so I want to clear it up with Jonathan. You meant it wasn't really advertised, it was but it posted on social media. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's so, so we're clear. Right. Nobody paid for an ad in the paper. No. This is social media post. Okay. Um, so then we get, uh, if this is what we have so far, this is, gets us to what actually occurred during the parade. Um, based upon videos that I was sent and have seen, it appears to me that the actions about which you're speaking were performed in front of at least one police officer in the Hedy Green parking lot, and yet the parade proceeded. The uh, the information that I have, uh, and I've talked to the officers, I've talked to some of the witnesses uh, to this, uh, they arrived uh, at the funeral home in the in the area of six o'clock when the parade was going to take off. The funeral home was not involved in it at all, right? No, no it, it was at the park. It was, park. It was, yes, it was a, in a green parking lot. Okay. Yes. Um, the, uh, the officers arrived there at six o'clock. There were a lot of vehicles in that area when the officers arrived. They spoke to the people that were supposed to be organizing it. They spoke to some of the people that were there. Uh, one officer uh, then left to go to the Atkinson Street and School Street intersection uh, to direct traffic there. One officer went to the um, uh, Red Light Hill intersection to direct traffic there. One officer was going to lead the procession. The, there was, to my knowledge, there was no um, spinning out or wheels burning at that time at the parade, at the start of the parade. 
Um, there were the, the vehicle proceeded, then there was a fire truck, and then other vehicles followed behind that. Um, but everybody that I have talked to at the PD says that there was no uh, was no burnouts, anything like that, at the start of the parade. Well, if I may, yep. I've had some individuals complain to me about it. Received a video. The video clearly shows a Bellis Falls police cruiser at the Heady Green parking lot parked there. And I think if you, yes, I, look, if I can keep if I can keep going, I think yep. I, and I'll certainly if I don't get it all in, yeah. ask me and I'll I'll let you know. Um, the parade proceeded. The lead car did not know of any uh, of these burnouts that were occurring um, behind him. The, uh, the uh, like I say, I yeah. had an estimate of maybe 50 vehicles involved, yeah. trucks, commercial vehicles, cars, um, were in this parade. Uh, it appears that there was burnouts uh, in the area of PKs. Uh, if you look at the road, there are certainly burnouts there. There were then burnouts on Atkinson Street. The officer at um, Atkinson Street and School Street uh, saw uh, some of the going on after the front of the parade had passed. He attempted to, there were, there were people on the sidewalks and other cars coming up to the direction. He tried to keep those separate and tried to speak to the to the vehicles that were coming down that he had seen yeah. prior to that, north of that intersection, uh, acting badly, driving badly, starting park vehicles, which is the, the legal term for it. He radioed in to the others that this was happening. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the procession proceeded um, and got back to the, to the Hetty Green Park. The cruiser that you see in there were pulled in there, the other vehicles were pulling in there some. They say about half of the vehicles in the in the procession uh, had came back to that location. Others had broken off once the procession had uh, made Red Light Hill and had uh, got back to the Teddy Green Park parking lot. Um, that's when the uh, issues arose. The officer that there called for backup. Uh, Ask the other officers to get there when they can, uh, because there were a group of people there um, burning out, uh, making um, in disorderly and, and destructive in their vehicles going yeah. through there. Uh, we had one officer there at the beginning. We then got a second officer there, the one from the School Street intersection got there, and then the other officer was able to get there. Uh, they stopped. One vehicle at night, they, they broke up the group. There was a group of people gathered there um, out of their vehicles. They broke that up. Um, the people that they were interacting with were not uh, cooperative or happy to be there with them um, or to be told, you cannot do this, you need to leave. Right. Uh, and they broke it up from there. So yes, there was a cruiser there. There was one officer there. He was doing what he could until the other officer could. Uh, we issued one ticket that night. It was the only vehicle uh, that had been doing that that we could uh, that we could stop uh, at that point in time. Uh, after reviewing videos, uh, we have at least three others that we have issued tickets to. Um, that we have mailed the tickets to. We have uh, two other vehicles that we have not been able to identify the, the uh, driver and the plate number, but we're still looking at the videos that are coming in uh, and going through it. It, uh, it. it was not a good situation. Nobody wanted this to happen. It was a disrespect to the young man uh, that died in a tragic circumstance. Um, Anyone else in the Kentucky Court have any comment on this? And well, I also feel the disrespect to our roads. Absolutely. You know, they look horrible. Yes. And there's basically nothing we can do 
to fix it, to get rid of it, unless we chip seal again to cover over it. Um, if it was a bad situation, if, if you could have, we would have um, we would have absolutely prevented it. If we had called in six or eight officers that you know were not on a post and not leaving the, the event, we may have been able to have stopped it and, and been heavy-handed. Um, the the whole incentive to the situation of how the young man died. Um, we certainly did not want this, try this, approve of this. We certainly did not. Right. Uh, and we are still investigating it to find out the people involved. Um, I didn't say it was a very nice tribute. No, it was. It was yeah. Um, yes, John. I don't even know where to begin on the amount of things that didn't happen right, people that didn't do their job. I think, mean, first off, I would go through and I would actually look at the video because there's multiple videos that I've seen that people have sent to me that show two police cruisers side by side, one of them with the door open while this is going on. Whether it was before or after, it doesn't matter. It was, it was it, there was no plan, it wasn't authorized. It wasn't a funeral procession because the definition of funeral procession is the movement of a body from a memorial service to place of Um So, to begin with, the, even the use of personnel and equipment mm -hmm. wasn't even properly authorized or, or dealt with. There was no, no plan. Obviously, there was plenty of notice about what was going to happen and no action by the police department at that time to, to do it. And I find it really hard to believe that whoever was leading the parade couldn't hear what was going on only a hundred yards behind them. and put a stop to it then. Or when it was happening at intersection of school in Atkinson Street, that it wasn't stopped then. Or that it wasn't addressed when it was back at the Hayden parking lot, which is actually a town road, it's not a parking lot, it's it has a PH designation. That it wasn't converged on and dealt with then. Because the result of that is what you see in the parking lot now and what you see around town. Uh, the other result of that was I had to, was walking my dog and I didn't have to see several sets of cars drag racing down School Street. Well, I mean, they were doing, they came out, lined up, and drag raced side by side down School Street back. There was a set of a car, and then about 40 seconds later, there was a set of, uh, a set of trucks first, and then trucks. And I don't know who, who was the officer in charge at the time, but no leadership at that point from that person, I would assume, uh, because this all happened, and it wasn't until the complaints started coming in the next day from residents about the actions. Uh, no people not stopping for the crosswalks, uh, being cut off at stop signs, just you know, the noise, the, the tire smoke. Um, and now we're in a situation where there's, there's no positive outcome coming out, right? There isn't because there's no situation that resolves what's going on in a manner that's going to be acceptable to everyone. So my question is, who takes responsibility? And what are we doing moving forward? Because this is just another black eye on the police department in my mind. Certainly, uh, we, have, we have put a hiatus on any even birthday parades that were not scheduled. We did a couple uh, on, front, on last Friday uh, that were scheduled, um, but we've stopped that. Absolutely, it could have been planned out better, should have been planned out better. Um, and we, we understand that. And 
something like this will not be going on again without uh, certainly our participation uh, from the very beginning and understanding that this just can't happen, um, that this situation can't happen. And more officers should have probably been there. Um, although that would include calling them in and, and adding. Well, no, the first, it should have been a typical name of the permit. And within the parade permit, no, the, the detail the that guidelines. discussed, the guidelines are discussed, mm -hmm. that outlines the plan for what is needed and for what is going to cost that bring officers in to be able to do that. That's correct. Right. It gives guidance so that people don't have the opportunity to pull that. There's a reason why we have these, these things. It's in of the 50 cars, we have, and we've looked at a lot of videos, we have uh, found um, six that we have seen that have been um, breaking the law of, of the many that were there. Um, and we are trying to deal with that, and we were trying to deal with it that night. Did stop cars. The officers at the scene at the Heady Green were trying to break up and stop people from doing what they were doing. The groups that were there uh, that were not, like I said, not pleasant to or cooperative uh, with us. Well, it's disturbing when you get people to contact you and say, Don't you have any more pol any police anymore in, the, in your village? I've been I was contacted from people from Walpole, Charlestown, uh, Westminster, Grafton. And that's the impression they get. Also, people talking about the drag racing. Uh, fortunately, it didn't turn out worse. I mean, if there was a kid playing on that street that had gotten ran over, or, or a car had rolled over and there'd been uh, a fatality or an injury, um, it doesn't. Put us in the best of life. Because what I mean is, it's not absolutely. I mean, like I said, this was no way to honor you young, that young man that you got passed away. And it doesn't, to, to me, it doesn't make any sense that even in the pandemic, we stopped issuing permits. Permits are available on the website, they're available to, to send over to the, to, or to email a request. Um, to town hall um, personnel, there isn't any reason why we stop doing it. The reality is the, the rules required to perform a proper parade or a permit to have a funeral procession or whatever, if, the, if that's what they wanted to do, would have given them some guidance. So we wouldn't, so you give them a preemptive strike. You don't let them, you let them think that they can just do whatever. On Facebook, there was a lot of social media. It was talked about way back, I think, on the 8th or whatever, that you can make as much noise as you want with your vehicles, you can be as loud as you want. But that's not the reality. That's not true in our community. And it's disrespectful to everyone who pays taxes uh, for the things that happen. The use of our, the abuse of our police department um, dealing with this. And, um, and on the other side, I would have said, as soon as you see that happen, I would have stopped the parade. We're done. It's over. We expect our police department to be able to control them. And I don't know at what, and now because of being told that the sequence of events of what happened when may not have been something that the police were aware of at the beginning of the parade, I, I can't say for sure if you could have stopped it at the very beginning, but as soon as it's seen, and going down the hill, you see so much white smoke blowing, someone can't not see that or smell that or hear that in a police crew. I just, I just cannot believe that part. So I, I'm, I'm very upset at how this whole thing happened going forward, I would say we should never ever issue any parade forms of any kind without a permit and that this clearly understood the behavior um, is a problem. Do you find enough to eat? Excuse me? Oh, good. Sure. So that was fun. Mute that person, please. Um, but. As far as moving forward, it's just a black eye for the community. It's a black eye for yeah. our police department. And since yeah, that- I've been doing a little more of that myself. <laughs> since that has happened, I have had more than three people going, stopping, actually stopping in front of my house, screeching out and making more noise because I've had the, because I've had the audacity to say something 
on my Facebook page as a village trustee that this is inappropriate and will be will be handled. We'll be talked about. Moving forward, we can't handle that. We don't want our our um, what was it, uh, community members deciding when they are going to tear up our roads, which we are not totally responsible for. That's a town function. I've already had it. I've already spoken to Edward, Edward Hammond about what to do about that parking lot. According to him, those two parking spots actually belong to the to the bank, and they can force us to, to the town to do something about them if they can actually be fixed, yeah. or if they're no, just going to wait till they wear out. There's no excuse in any event where you come and you damage people's property or, mm -hmm. or municipal property. Yep. You know the call I got today was from a woman from Grafton. Yeah. Madam um, Chair. Well, can you let, let the yeah. trustee finish and then off? And the, the quote unquote Please. was the lawlessness in your town. That's the impression that an outsider has. And a well, person that, that grew up here too. Um, it's a disappointment. It's not a situation that we take lightly in any sense of the word. And we are absolutely enforcing if we see people drag racing, if we see people. Um, uh, burning out, they're stopped, they're ticketed. Yeah. Do you not see it as a failure of your police officer not doing anything? From what I have gathered from the officers that were there that day, <clears throat> that they were, they had a uh, difficult situation in the parking lot itself there, um, trying to deal with the people that were there. That that's but prior to that, I would take I, I would take a serious look at. The pictures and the videos because you're gonna you're gonna see evidence that your police officers prior to that point were were witness to the act and didn't didn't take action didn't take action mm -hmm. and that to me that's someone not doing their job they're sworn duty actually right they're looking to duty they're looking to duty maybe well I mean it it like the officer on uh, the post on School Street. And, and access the street. Uh, he had, and I discussed this with him, that when he saw the vehicles that were acting out, um, he had pedestrians there that he was having issues with keeping them back. Uh, other vehicles that were trying to uh, come in from the south and from School Street that weren't involved in this. And it, it, I said, could you have pulled them over? Could you have stopped the vehicles that were doing it? And he said, not safely for himself or the pedestrians there that he couldn't. There was one vehicle in particular that he had seen acting this way. Uh, and he was not able to do that on a foot post at that point in time. And it, it was a fluid situation that, um, that, that got out of hand uh, badly. And we know that. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think it got out of hand. I think the police officer. That's, I mean, it was led by the police department. It was, yeah, that's the impression, you know, that's, that's, the that's, the, that's the office that most people are, are looking at now. So just to let you know what, what the representation of that night reflects on not only the village and the village police department, also reflects on the fire department too. However, the fire department was smart enough to break off when it started to happen and put the truck back on the fire. Yeah, the first one. The last one couldn't, but knew what was going on. And well, they kind of and one of the real servants, yes. Yeah. Um, if I may, Mr. Dorsha. Please. <clears throat> My ignorance. When there's a parade permit issue, who pays the cost of the police officers? Is the question. And then shortly I'll give you the follow-up. Mm -hmm. Why shouldn't the, if they don't, why shouldn't the applicant be paying something for public safety? Mm -hmm. and why shouldn't it be the chief determination based on his experience, the nature of the community, the time of day, many variables, how many officers he needs to call in? Those officers should be paid for, in my opinion, by the parade permit. There's a good chance, it looks to me from budgets, there's going to be less police on duty next year than there are this year. So who who pays for public protection? Yeah, what's the, what's the answer to that, Jan? You know that? I mean, I, I mean, you know that answer. I don't know. 
So in the parade permit guidelines, pretty easy to look this up. Um, for the parade permit, the applicant pays. Sorry, the applicant, the applicant, the applicant would pay. The but chief, the payment is never commensurate with anything we saw out there. So the there, was no, there, was, there, was, there was there was no permit, so there was no five dollar right. permit. Right. Yes, yeah. is negligible. Which, but the applicant would pay for any services that were needed to be rented. Yes. Right. Yeah. But that's all moved just now. Like, that's just like the alumni parade. The okay. alumni association parade pays for the police to right. close the streets to do all of that work. I don't believe the, the alumni association pays for that. Just they, like a house closing. Hmm, that's a thing you put money in escrow. Yeah. Why shouldn't the chief determine what he th thinks he needs? It, it should cost, and then take one point five, one and a half, put it in an account, and they get returned. He gets returned what he does not have to spend. Just a thought, but yeah. it, it seems like I was listening right. to the chief carefully. Seems to me he's thoughtful. He cares. He's interested, but things just get out of hand. Well, rarely, I think, but these things will happen. Yeah. And the town cannot pick this up, especially if you're cutting budgets, fees for services, good old concept. The, the Alumni Association pays for uh, the dance where there are officers. The band, right. Right. Um, but the uh, parade itself, uh, it does not. Is it, no, it's considered a contribution of the village portion to that right. event. Yeah. Right. So only the dance do they pay. I don't ever remember voting. I don't think he did either. We but that's what it's been, it's been we, best practice for years. It's something worth considering. Would, we would have to take a look at it. Well, take a look at it. Ways and, yeah, ages ago. So we've never voted on that, on charging for parade services and so on and so forth. And then and the online that parade. It's worth bringing open, but it's been going on that way for many Well, years. we've discussed it in relation to other events such yep. as old home days. And I think there's a couple other people. Uh, I remember correctly, mm -hmm. but yes. so it's you know it's not that it can't be brought up. We and we and I think we should, especially since now it's yeah. going to be tooled to September twenty fifth. And we do, there was a time, I believe, in the history, if I remember correctly, that the board decided on the permit, and it changed over some time because of expediency or streamlining the process to where it went to it's management or administrative. The, if you read the ordinance, the board has the authority. And in the board speed, yeah. the manager can, and that is mm -hmm. it. Now, the manager in the past has also allowed the chief of police to approve that mm -hmm. just out of expediency because they're right. doing the uh, organization for it right. and, right. and needs to do the detail work. However, it's the board's authority right. to approve or not approve. Right. So we'll, well, that's, we'll get it on an agenda. That's why I bring it up because it, I hate relinquishing any authority. You know, that's the way I am. I've, I've been here. And I, until I this. Until this point, I didn't mind having the, the manager consult us and have the authority to do it. But after this point, I don't know exactly. Yeah, I think you changed it. I don't know that we're, that the proper details were followed anymore, and that it's just kind of do what we want. Yeah, another point. Taken. Another deficiency in leadership. This is definitely a, a learning curve for all of us. Um, there is one more item on the agenda. Deb? That's yes. With Madam this on the Madam President I'm, of the Ordinance Committee and looking over this and making sure, because there is an argument to say this can be tiered. But a lot of these are very small and very great. But then, plus, I could see us just signing off, but the larger things such as this do need trustee review. Approval. Yep. yep, that's true. I mean, it wouldn't be can we hurt to have it on that group? But only so that they can review it, although I believe it's been reviewed and, and we thought it was fine. But they not, not, not anymore. Not anymore. Okay, so, so we'll we bring reviewed, something new to the trustees. Refer to the ordinance and they'll forget it here. Right? Are you all amenable to that? And we'll bring it to the To an extent, depending on what the criteria of the event, someone requesting the event, you know, I can't predict the ordinance committee. No, they really might can't. very well say, No, oh, we're never going to let the trustees do well sign off on this. Door. I'm going to tell you my impression of the committee is that we appoint, we have, yeah, yeah. they're purely advisory to the board. Yeah, the board all. makes the final decision. Agreed. Uh, right. I, I don't want to, I'm not going to fence with you, John, uh, Chuck, <laughs> but I had this conversation with the previous administration as to, you know, uh, what the committees do and what the board. And again, I'm not willing to relinquish any authority. 
and this is probably, for lack of a better example, an example. Of what's There's no wrong. daylight between us. Um, yeah. You would get a, a more professional, well thought out. This is our best option. Yeah. You could look at both and, yeah. and be, you know, better prepared. Yeah. Whatever you choose. No, all choose the to do with that. All the information yeah. is, is certainly welcome. The more information, you can make a better decision. But I've sat here, I sat on the select board too, where I've heard in reference to a revolving loan fund. Well, you know, the committee said this, you guys did that. Well, you know what? Um, maybe there was a reason. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um, there. So it, again, we don't relinquish any, no. anything. We get a recommendation. We right. can say no to that. Um, there is another item on the agenda. It's the personnel rules, but I don't know if anyone was ready to do that because this is sort of a, not an emergency, but kind of an emergency. And we only have um, until six o'clock to vacate our room. Next meeting. Okay, so we should push it off to the next meeting on the June meeting for the trustees to deal with. Make sure you read those. See what. Um, what we're going to agree to because the town and the village have to sign off on, on that. Um, there was one thing I meant to add to the agenda, uh, which I did not, which is a brief admitted executive session um, for the purpose of, uh, oh God, where would it be? It's the employment one. Personnel or administrative? It's, yeah, the, appoint, the appointment or employment, would that be one of Employment, employment, or evaluation. It's just, it's very brief. I doubt we'll take any action, but we need to say, but the village trustees need to hear something that we need, we need to take action on. They need to take action on. And that would be with the, ex, without the, the, excuse me, without the manager, interim manager, acting manager, and without the finance director. We just need about 10 minutes. Yeah. Do you want to make a motion? Sure. I'll go ahead and make a motion. But... And I know I'll get spanked by the well, Secretary of State for not adding it correctly, but. Is, is what it is um, in these times. I'll make the motion that the Board of Trustees enter into an executive session to discuss the appointment or appointment or evaluation of a public officer or employee uh, where premature general knowledge may clearly place the municipality at a disadvantage. Uh, the public body would make it or must make the final decision or in an open meeting explain its reasons for the decision under uh, 1 VSA 313 AM 3. I second. I'll second. All right. Any discussion on that? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 aye.